Yeah, so one of the bigger stories that came out of the Work Truck Show was the Blue Arc van. And uh, Blue Arc uh, is a company that's a spinoff from the Shift Group. And so in this video here coming up, uh, I interviewed uh, Blue Arc Vice President General Manager Eric Fisher. Go ahead and check it out. There's a lot of details. Uh, Eric gets into uh, the van. Uh, a lot of helpful information if you're new to commercial electric uh, vehicle shopping. And also he gets into charging, which of course is a big deal. And so they have the Blue Arc uh, mobile power unit. And so that does um, offer the uh, capability to charge your EVs without you know getting into a lot of these, you know, land use uh, issues potentially if you're leasing uh, the property, all right? So go ahead and check that out. Um, and if you want it, you can hop forward to that, right? The Blue Arc uh, Power Cube. And that's at 12 minutes and 44 seconds into the video. Hi, uh, Eric Fisher, VP and GM of Shift Innovations, which transitioned into Blue Arc EV Solutions. So today I'd like to walk you through our new design, our purpose-built walk-in van, commercial grade. What we've done with this truck is go into EV we wanted to make sure that we have the future design, the aerodynamics, the sleek uh, design to go with the EV chassis, the solution. And that's by reducing the weight on the truck. So the first task is to take weight out of the front of the cab. And so we went from fiberglass components, uh, aluminum and stamped parts to all composites. And that entails one CDP, CDP material, which is in two parts injected and that gives us the flexibility to really design, hone in the design on the parts to where we can thicken the parts in the areas where they need to and thin the parts or lighten the parts in the areas where their structural you know, uh, requirements are, are low. With that, we can reduce the cost, reduce the weight, and build a product that can perform the same as a regular thick fiberglass. In addition to that, the parts that we did under the hood, it's all stamped, stamped aluminum and that will reduce the cost again and improve the scalability of manufacturing to get the you know, a scale to support our customers' requirements. As you transition through the body, past the cab, that area will be all aluminum. So it's lightweight aluminum coupled with a lower cladding as a composite. The reason we do that lower cladding for ease of repair, if it's all aluminum, when you do get into a fender bender, the truck has to go out to a body shop, it's you know, out of service for weeks, getting repaired, painted, and put back into the market. By using the cladding, it'd be easy to replace that lower piece, put a new one back on, and the truck back on the street the next day doing this work. So one of the things that our objective of this design is that to take the old 1970 bread truck, which is really all square, sheet metal stamp, riveting, buck, huck fasteners, to more of an automotive grade design. As you can see, this dash right here is all designed for driver safety and comfort. Everything we do in this truck when we design it is based on the ergonomics. So we do a lot of studying on the 50th and 95 percentile drivers, and we make sure that everything within that dash is reachable without having to take your eyes off the street or the road. The other part of it is that when we design trucks, we make sure that they are modular. We understand our customers are all unique and they want different uh, requirements for their dash. So everything you see here, that bucket will change into a locker, a writing tray. We can have hand-holding device that they use for package tracking, sit here in a docking station. We have 12 inch dual display that allows the customer to have turn by turn directions and 360 camera for them to be able to have a safe uh, driving conditions, especially when they're driving into a lot of urban areas where their kids, pedestrians, cyclists, we want to make sure they see everything around them before they take off. The other part of building a delivery truck, it's all about really the optics. What are you able to see with the large curved glass, large quarter panels, large side mirrors? It's all about visi visibility to make sure the driver can see street signs, home addresses, and uh, be able to uh, work and drive this truck in all weather conditions. Another part that is really critical to a parcel or a delivery van that makes 150 to 300 stops is the ease of access in and out of the seat. So you can see right here, when we designed this, we designed the height so we can just turn around and slide out of the seat. What does that return gives 
reduces the driver fatigue because I'm not bending my knees up and down to lift my body. And that's really critical. As you're working eight to 10 hours in these trucks, everything we do here, this is kind of like a living room. This is the driver where he does his job. This is his office. So everything here is designed for that safety, comfort, and efficiency to make sure they can do their job every day and still be not worn out when they go home and spend time with their families. So this is one of our um, traditional floor plank design that we've done. Again, it's lightweight floor planks and they interlock together and that gives us the strength to handle 5,000 pound payload, but yet be light and rigid for that application. And you can see we can have the non-skid on that to prevent slippage during you know, ice or snow or whatever that you feed with track into the truck. Everything in the back of the truck here is modular. So you can see where those bolts are. You can add T-studs, you can add brackets, you can add tie downs. You can customize this truck after we build it without having to spec everything up front. We integrated flat solar panels on the roof. They generate up to 1.2 kilowatt. The purpose of those flat solar panels to condition the low voltage battery. So we've been into the EV space now for about 10 years and we build a lot of trucks. And one of the things that we always struggle with is the low voltage battery. So think about it, you're sitting in an LA traffic. You have two displays running, you have sensors, you have lights, you have PCU, ECU, the computers, everything is drawing energy. And we call that the accessory load. So we normally bank for about one to one and a half kilowatt of accessory load panels will offset that to make sure that we don't dip into the high voltage batteries uh, when we're sitting idle in traffic or in a parking lot or loading the truck and that would help increase the uh, you know uh, the usage of the the batteries on board to get the range that the customer needs the other thing we added is electric rear doors so i have a key fob in my pocket we taped this because we're people playing with it mm -hmm. too much but we have a switch right here and I have a key fob in my pocket so it's a proximity sensor I don't have a key ring but yeah. so I have that in my pocket so now I can carry boxes without having to lift a door and then close that door and when I walk out I can just bump the tail light and it automatically close behind me there's two things for that. One, making sure that the driver, again, not having to unlock and lift this door and close it. Two, cargo security. So a lot of our customers are busy, are distracted, unloading dollies and walking away and they forget the door open and you'll have issues with securing the packages. So both the rear door automatically close and lock, the side doors with the same thing. Once you close them, you have to have the key fob to be able to get back in. The payload capacity on this truck is 5,000 pounds. So this is a class three uh, chassis, commercial grade, 14,000 GBW. The complete truck loaded with battery packs, body, upfit package will be around 9,000 pounds. So that gives us about 5,000 pounds for the customer to carry all kinds of goods in the back of the truck. So this product right now, we're in the pre-production stage. So we're talking to suppliers, securing uh, you know, all the tooling it needs to go into the pre-production units, run all the testing and validation. Uh, so the product right now is launching serial production mid-2023. Response has been really great, phenomenal. Uh, when we launched the product yesterday, we had a great turnout. I think we had over two, 300, 300 people out here. And we had people watching it through live stream. The interest from customers, all long-term customers that we've been doing business with for 40 some years, uh, it's very exciting to see the reaction. They're really excited. They like the product. They know our, our company and our history to stand behind what we build and what we say we're going to deliver. Mm -hmm. So we look forward to really working with the new dealers that we're signing up and also our customer base that's going to transition from ICE to EV. So this truck is equipped with 8 kilowatt uh, electric heater. That heater is set up with a heat exchanger that runs antifreeze through the heater core. So it's really the same thing, just like a small engine. It's run off the high voltage batteries. And we have a five kilowatt AC compressor. That compressor is designed to cool the cab or cool the batteries or the battery charger. So for us, when we integrated the batteries into the frame, we selected commercial grade batteries that have 
a life cycle, 4,000 plus life cycles, meaning they are a lot higher cycle rating than the passenger car. Passenger car is normally about 2,000 to 2,500. We know this is a commercial truck that lasts 10 to 15 years. So we went with a commercial grade packs. Those packs are water cooled, not water cooled, but it's, you know, glycol or antifreeze. So we have the system that's running and the heater or the radiator cools the, every, all the components, the battery packs are managed through heat and cool through the thermal system. That helps lengthen the life of the batteries during, you know, cold weather or hot weather uh, because they can maintain that temperature between 60 to 80 degrees, that sweet spot where the batteries can do their best work in charge and discharge. We can charge this truck within one and a half hours on DC fast charge, or we can go AC charging, which is a level two at 19 kilowatt, about six hours, six to seven hours. Most of our customers don't do deliveries at night, so these trucks, when they go back to the depot, they'll plug in overnight, so level two is very acceptable for a lot of our customers. The brake regen, we have four different settings, all the way up from light regen all to one pedal driving. So you don't even have to touch the brakes. Matter of fact, for, this, for these trucks, we have to buy special rotors to prevent them from rusting because you don't use the brakes. And so that's one of the challenges that come with really good EV trucks that the rotors will rust. Uh, so therefore, you're capturing all that energy back into the battery packs. Yeah, you don't even have to replace the brakes if you really use all the regen. And what we factor with the regen is capturing about 15 to 20% energy back into the battery packs. So the battery packs rated at 4,000 cycles. If these trucks run about 250 uh, to 300 days a year, you do the math, that translates into about 13 years. There's also, it's not just a, a cycle time, there's also a calendar aging with the batteries, and it depends how you use them, how far you drain them and charge and use and abuse, uh, but they should last a long time being of the commercial grade. So the standard uh, range, which is now 166 kilowatt lithium ion uh, NMC liquid cooled battery packs, will gets us around 150 to 175. The extended range option will increase that by about 100 miles. The battery packs can range from 120 to 240 because we understand different customers use the trucks uh, for different applications and therefore we need to allow for that flexibility. So one of the challenges that we hear with our customers is that, hey, yeah, it's great that you have an electric truck. It's, uh, how am I gonna charge it? So having electric trucks with no chargers is not gonna really help solve the problem or help the transition from IS to EV. So what we've done, knowing that the challenges when it comes to a leased uh, facility or a customer that needs, uh, you know, permitting from a, a leased facility and they are not able to get it. In addition to that, being able to commit to the power company to install all the you know, equipment required to drive that energy, whether it's a megawatt, two megawatts, to be able to charge 20, 30, 50 trucks. What we've established is a power cube. So we're calling that a mobile solution that can hold 500 to three megawatt of energy stored energy on board, utilizes smart solar system that tracks the sun for best sun capture. We can do level two or DC fast chargers. This thing can scale from three all the way up to 14 chargers. We also have a wind vertical wind turbine option to go with this. We can generate up to 400 kilowatts per day. So it depends on the size and the scale. We'd be able to this to either be standalone off grid, it's an own micro grid, or it can tie into the grid and trickle charge 24 hours a day. And the beauty of that is that you don't have to take energy during peak hours. So we can monitor that energy when we take it in. While the trucks are out making deliveries, you charge throughout the day. When you come back at night, you charge the trucks. So when you bring 50 trucks, you don't want to put that load all onto the grid. And then you go into the high rates, uh, you know, for the electricity. What we want to do is you want to stay below that peak. In addition to that, our customers, most of them do their, uh, you know, packaging, sorting, loading up the trucks at night. So some of them are running already at capacity. So the, 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 answer, the question is, how am I gonna charge, run my you know, warehouse and also charge all these EV trucks? So by harnessing the energy during the day and storing it and charging the trucks at night will also help solve that problem.